Hey everyone, Mattel Skater here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, please do subscribe because on this channel I'm discussing all sorts of personality disorders, healing your trauma, and understanding who you really are so you can live your best, most amazing life and start loving yourself as you should have since the day you were born. Today I'm going to talk about the vulnerable narcissist. This is actually an extremely hard topic to talk about because I am 100% sure that there are more vulnerable narcissists in your life than you may think. And actually, a lot of people don't even know what vulnerable narcissists are until they actually fully learn about that personality trait and understand that that's actually a disorder. And before I start talking about the vulnerable narcissist, I do want to say that surprise, surprise, the vulnerable narcissist can actually heal, but it's not your job to heal them. So let's start talking about the vulnerable, really sad narcissist. The vulnerable narcissist is actually your typical person in your life who is very uncomfortable with themselves. But let me tell you the traits that they carry so you can understand who they are. The vulnerable narcissist is your typical person who constantly feels bad for themselves, who constantly walks around with extreme low self-esteem. You can literally see how uncomfortable they are every single day of their life. They constantly seek for validation from you. Hey, did you like this shirt? Hey, do you like these shoes? Hey, how does my hair look? Stuff like that. I'm gonna get really deep on this topic because it's really hard to talk about because I'm telling you there are a lot of vulnerable narcissists in your life, okay? Now, you may be attracting or you stay in those relationships in your life because you feel like you're that person who can help them, who can teach them, who can save them, who can show them how great they are. But again, let's discuss. A lot of you may not want to accept that what I'm talking about is a vulnerable narcissist. To you, it may seem like it's just a normal person who has issues and you just want to be, you know, there to help them. But that's really not what's going on. So the vulnerable narcissist is always going to be the person who's going to put you on a pedestal, who's going to praise you and admire you and tell you how great you are. And you're over there sitting thinking, yeah, wow, well, 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 thank you very much. And then like five minutes later, they will start telling you that you're annoying. They will start telling you that uh, you talk too much. They will start telling you that, you know, you make them feel this way. You put them down and, you know, the way that they feel is, is that you made them like that, you know. Basically, like, you know, if you give them, you know, constructive, you know, not criticism, but, you know, if you try to give them some sort of help for something, if you tell them, oh, maybe you should do it this way or maybe you should do it this way, you know, just to help them out, they will literally, literally start arguing with you and tell you, that you made them feel miserable about themselves. And it's interesting because it's like, why should you be responsible for the way somebody else feels? And now, since you feel bad that you believe that you made them feel miserable about themselves, you stay there and you take their, their, their verbal abuse, you know, the arguing, the yelling, the screaming, the blame shifting, you know, the back and forth. And you try to explain to this person, like, no, I was uh, just trying to help you out. And then, you know, you, you want to make things better by giving them a hug or, you know, telling them how great they are. Or like, oh, you know, would you like to go to this place on such and such day? Or you feel this ridiculous need to constantly check on them and make sure that they're okay by calling or texting them and asking them how, they, how their day was. And it's always almost like you literally have to take care of their emotions 24 hours a day. Okay, so this person can literally be a family member. This person can even be your own parent that will literally lash at you for every little positive thing that you want to give to them. Okay, and they will blame shift at you 
for making them feel miserable. And now this is the thing. Have you ever heard the term? And I'm sure you have misery loves company. It doesn't matter how insecure or how sad or how miserable a person is. There's no reason why their personality should also make you feel just as miserable as they are. And now you feel this need to be positive with them, to be extra loving and extra caring and extra there for them. Phone calls, texts, hangouts, hugs. Okay. And you find yourself constantly really being around them and constantly feeling like, you know what? Oh my God, you know, if, if you just give them something really, if you just give them, you know, some sort of uh, a, a compliment, they will be happy. But you know what? They're doing a little better today. They're doing a little better today. And then like the next day you find yourself in an argument with them. It could be literally anything. Okay. Um, if you're in a sexual relationship with a vulnerable narcissist, it's literally the worst thing you can ever do to yourself because if you have some sort of self-awareness or confidence the vulnerable narcissist like literally as you're going on a date or when you're at a restaurant notice how they have to look at other people they have to look at other people because they just feel so insecure about themselves that they want to make sure that nobody is out to attack them and they always look at you like they always look at you for every little thing that you're doing and really make you making you feel uncomfortable. And those eye stares are usually a validation stare. Like, you know, if you stare at them, if, if they stare at you, OK, for example, if they stare at you and you like notice it and then you smile like mm, everything's OK, that's validation again. They can't just sit there and enjoy their meal and mind their own business. They literally have to make you feel uncomfortable at all costs to make them feel seen, to make them validated. To ma oh, okay, she saw me. Okay, great. Now I feel good. Okay, now I can keep eating my meal. Now, the reason that these examples sound extremely minor and not really much of a big deal is because it's so it seems so normal, right? It seems so normal to have to take care of somebody's emotions all the time. And actually with a vulnerable narcissist, all the things that they do seem extremely minor, especially to the outside world who doesn't really understand this sick dynamic that's going on. But when you're actually in that relationship, you will always feel miserable. You will literally feel trapped. You feel like you're walking on eggshells because you literally have to take care of somebody's emotions all the time. And the, <laughs> the worst part about a vulnerable narcissist is that they are really, really, really good at blame shift. Excuse me, blame shifting. If this person two seconds ago admired you and told you how great you are and how much they enjoy being around you and you, you're so freaking great. And then five minutes later, they start arguing with you and yelling at you and calling you names. It makes you think to yourself, what the hell just happened in the, in the last five minutes that made this person switch? They don't appreciate your validation. They don't appreciate you being kind to them. Again, misery loves company. So because they are so miserable inside, they can't stand to see other people happy because they're so miserable. Imagine somebody who's so insecure, so broken that it bothers them to see that the person that they're hanging out with is doing better than them emotionally. And why can't they feel the same way? Why? So they start lashing at that person and they want to see that your reaction, your sadness, your facial expressions, your back and forth with them makes them feel some sort of worthy. It makes them feel alive. It makes them feel like, oh, wow, great. I, I just, I, I, I am somewhat important that I got to make this person feel that miserable. So I don't really care about how they feel right now. As long as I can see that I can change their mood and I can see that I made some sort of effect on how they live on a daily basis, that makes me happy. And it's a very temporary happiness. I don't know if you've literally realized that when you go back and forth with a narcissist in an argument, 
You're trying to show them what they did wrong so they can apologize, so they can take blame for their actions and realize that arguing, yelling, and screaming, and blame shifting is not really helping anyone. Notice how you're just barking and barking and barking and barking and they're just like sitting there looking vulnerable like a little puppy, like somebody who doesn't understand why, they being, why they're being yelled at, like somebody who doesn't understand, you know, what is really going on and then they say something ridiculous like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going to try to work on it, I'm going to try and then they disappear. Okay, bye. Have a good day. I got to go. Or on the phone. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll work on it. Goodbye. What is that? What do you think that is? Did you not notice how they just disappear out of nowhere after you're trying to really explain to them like, hey, you can't keep doing this to me. You can't keep blaming me for the way that you feel and you can't keep ex expecting me to validate your emotions all the time. And they just disappear right after that conversation. You just basically gave them all your energy. And now they're full. They've had it. Oh my God, I feel great. I just made this person miserable. I just got this energy. You know, now this person is going to sit there and question their thoughts, beliefs, actions. And they're going to question themselves, their sanity. And that's what I just did. And now I'm out. A normal, healthy person who really, truly understands that they just hurt your feelings for any reason, they would literally not only sincerely apologize, but they won't do it again. The vulnerable narcissists realize the patterns. How many times did that person that I'm talking about right now that you know who I'm talking about how many times did you hear the words, sorry, 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 sorry? And also, did you ever find yourself apologizing for trying to step boundaries with them? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, I don't really know why, you know, we always get into arguments. You know, maybe I shouldn't have been so hard on you. You know, maybe... You know, maybe you did go through something and I just don't understand it. So I just want to apologize. Did you ever notice the back and forth repeated patterns of you both? Them saying sorry and you saying sorry and them saying sorry and you saying sorry. That's not a healthy relationship. And then you really sit there in confusion. Like, why did I just apologize for something that I truly felt that I was being wronged? If I'm validating this person and if I'm hanging out with them and if I'm calling them to check up on them and if I'm getting the, if I'm, you know, really wanting to show them a positive, you know, way of loving themselves, why am I apologizing for it? It's because the vulnerable narcissist has these extremely incredible emotions and facial expressions that will literally make you feel bad. And the only reason you feel bad is because you feel this ridiculous need to take care of them. Because you want to show them how great they are. You want to show them that they can love themselves too. But what you're doing over here is not loving yourself and letting this person consistently and repeating, repeatedly do the exact same thing to you. It doesn't matter if that's your brother or sister or your mother, your father, your cousins. Notice the pattern. It's not your job to validate them all the time. It's sick to need to validate somebody's feelings and emotions all the time or compliment, give them compliments just so they can feel good about themselves or have to look at them and validate them with a smile. And it's a fake smile and you know it because you don't even want to do it. But you feel obligated to do it. Obligation. The guilt that's trapped inside you that you feel like, oh my God, you know what? If I don't smile to this person, if I don't call them or if I don't text them back, they're actually going to get mad and ask me why I didn't do it. And then we're going to start arguing. A vulnerable narcissist can't literally live without validating themselves. They just can't do it. They can't do it. They can't look at themselves in the mirror and go, yo, I'm amazing. They have to 
ask you if you think they're amazing. And again, the vulnerable narcissist is always insecure and always sad when they are around anything and anyone. That sadness and that vulnerability is basically for everyone around them to feel bad for them and validate them. And only then will they feel good about themselves. Ah! Listen, everybody has issues. Everybody's been traumatized. But if you're walking on planet Earth expecting the entire universe to pat you on the back and tell you that you're great, then you need to heal yourself. And if you're the person who feels the need to take care of somebody like that, then you too need to heal yourself because it's not your job to make somebody feel worthy. It's their job to do that and know that they're worthy. And it's your job to be worthy of yourself and worthy enough to know that you don't need this back and forth, that you don't need to feel obligated or awkward and, and feel shame if you don't do something for someone else. And you certainly don't need to argue back and forth with somebody because they just can't seem to understand that arguing and blame shifting is not healthy. And it's extremely disrespectful. And that's just not a healthy relationship to be in. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, wow, well, I have a lot of family members in my family who do that. And I just really genuinely care about them. And I just want to, you know, make them feel good about themselves. Again, it's not your job. Listen to this whole sentence. I want to make them feel good about themselves. I want to make them. And you can't. Because if they can't make themselves feel good, what makes you think you can? I also want to say that a vulnerable narcissist, if you are in a relationship with them, they will literally attack you and argue with you if you don't want to be physically, sexually with them when they want to be sexual with you. And that's also something that is so traumatizing because it's not your job and it's not your place and it's not what you something you have to do to please someone if you're not interested in having sex or if you're not interested in being intimate in that moment and someone is forcing you guilt and tripping you like guilt shaming you like oh but we're we're together you have to do this for me aren't we together don't you love me ouch watch the signs Okay, now I just want to say before this video ends, I do know that these examples sound extremely minor, but if you are dealing with a vulnerable narcissist, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you know how wrenching it is to constantly surround yourself and repeat these cycles with that person. Because again, in the outside world, it just seems like a normal thing to take care of somebody's emotions and be a good person and try to help somebody. But it's not what you think it is with a vulnerable narcissist. It's actually a nightmare. And it's very scary when they switch from being extremely vulnerable to being argumentative and jealous and resentful and envious and giving you these horrible stares as if you really did something cruel to them. It's scary. So take care of yourself, guys. I'll see you on the next mental health series. Like this video if it helped you. And stay tuned for my next narcissism series that we will be discussing. Next up, the covert narcissist. Take care of yourself first.